Good morning. Tuesday, September 17th, <clears throat> 2024. Time kind of got away. A little bit behind here. All right. Let's see if anybody shows up today. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, there's my lovely wife. She showed up today. <laughs> Peggy, good morning. Continue to pray for you and George. <clears throat> Beautiful day outside. Uh, heating up through the day, but <clears throat> definitely cooler mornings and not... Uh, Seeming to stay as hot <clears throat> as long. Yes, you are my captive audience. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm really, I don't know, kind of tired of the Democrats trying to uh, kill their opponents. Um, I'm, I... Uh, <clears throat> tired of them trying to, uh, I mean, here, here's the deal. They're going out and the very things that they condemn publicly are the very things that they are doing privately. <laughs> oh, and the things that they accuse Trump of going to do are the very things that they are doing. And, oh, I tell you, <clears throat> They, uh, I saw a picture of Hillary on an interview yesterday or whatever, uh, looking quite haggardly. Um, oh, Hillary, if you don't uh, come to trust Christ as your Savior, what uh, is in store, in store for you uh, is a horrible thing. And you know what I find is sad in, in all of this, um, is uh, whatever happened to Epstein or Epstein's Island? Whatever happened to that to that list? You know, every time I see Hillary, it reminds me of uh, Slick Willie. And uh, I, uh, you know, there's something special waiting for that man too one day. Um, but I wonder what happened to that list of uh, perverts that were uh, child abusers, um, pedophiles, and uh, they just parade themselves around, looked like, you know, Shannon Sharp, but he came out. I don't know what it, how in the world that happened, but uh, some kind of a sex tape, you know, he, he was taping with some woman, um, and he's right back on ESPN, which is no surprise. ESPN is owned by Disney, which is a bunch of perverts, and, um, <clears throat> but... I don't, uh, I don't get it. These people, there's, there's no shame and uh, they parade it right down the middle of the street. And, um, I, anyway, I don't get it, but hey, uh, <clears throat> just, uh, get the message out to the Democrats. Quit trying to kill President Trump, okay? If he wins fair and square, leave him alone. And we had to put up with Obama for eight long, dreadful years and then we had to put up with Obama for another long and dreadful four years here that we're still in today and I'm just really tired of Obama too and Mr. Obama you too need to uh, repent you you really need to understand Christ is the only way and that uh, you will die and go to hell one day if you don't trust Christ as your savior and maybe uh it would change your attitude on a lot of things. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, this is my last day on for a while. We are headed out to uh, Alabama tomorrow. And then this weekend, we will be at the stand conference at Dan Curalo's. Uh, Jody, we are staying in uh, Dr. Cur Dr. Q's house. And I will see Dr. Curalo on Monday and Tuesday, I hear. So... We're excited about that, and uh, 
Uh, it'll be good to see all those guys. Pray for Teresa. She will be doing a uh, ladies uh, uh, get together on Saturday this week. And then um, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're in our stand conference. And then we'll be back in Alabama Thursday and Friday and flying home that next Saturday. So we'll be gone a few days, um, but <clears throat> it'll be an enjoyable time getting to see little James and Kareth and Matt and uh, actually going to see um, Dave and Bethley Young also and uh, celebrate James's first birthday together. <clears throat> so it'll be a great time and uh, looking forward to that. So... Anyway, Psalm 61, what, a, what a, an assurance that God gives to all of us. Uh, David writes this. He says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows." Uh, even even David in the Old Testament is uh, teaching assurance, and I'm I'm truly grateful that uh, God's saving power is is uh, not in jeopardy of uh, weakening, and that God's love is uh, conditional. I'm grateful that it's not, and I'm just grateful that uh, when God saves us, that. We are protected by his power. And so let's live that way. And let's not live in fear of losing something that God has, but let us uh, walk in a way that truly is honoring and pleasing to him and, and that we can uh, lay many rewards down at his feet one day. I, I was reading this in, I'm going to jump around a lot today, but in Proverbs 23 today, in verses 17 and 18, it says, Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long, for surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Another assurance, right? But the thing that I question on this is, uh, let not thine heart envy sinners. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't want what the world has, and let's uh, stay away from that, right? <clears throat> but be thou in fear of the Lord all the day long. You know, we, we say a lot that what's wrong with our country is there's no fear of God. And, and I agree with that. But what about us? You know, what about, do we truly, I don't know, I struggle with this. Do we truly fear God when whenever we choose to sin as believers? I mean, we we try to walk close to God and then we make bad choices in our lives too. And do we truly fear the 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 heavy weight of God's hand on our our lives? Are we so stuck in uh, sin uh, that we uh, we want the pleasures of it more than we uh, fear God? I don't know. I, I uh, And I don't know how to grow that fear of God. I don't know how to, uh, you know, where, where it would be far more of a... Uh, barrier, you know, from doing the wrong things, but we definitely need to have a, a fear of God. And somehow we need to, uh, you know, allow that fear to, um, and by fear, it's, it's a reverence, right? Uh, and understanding who God is, not a fear of losing what God's given us, not, not that, but truly, I, I guess fear is power, fear the, you know, not living up to his expectations. I don't know. I mean, I don't, anyway, I still struggle with that sometimes. And, um, definitely we need to have a healthy fear of God. And uh, I know our country doesn't, and many unbelievers don't, but maybe they don't because they don't see any fear in believers lives either. So 
we definitely need to have a healthy fear of God, right? <clears throat> and I've been reading in Isaiah, so I'm going to stay here for a little while. And um, uh, just uh, Isaiah is obviously dealing with the judgment of God coming on Israel, coming on Judah, the divided kingdoms, <clears throat> because obviously they didn't have any fear of God. And uh, so God judges them and lets them go into captivity. Isaiah is preaching to them, telling them, get right with God because this is coming, right? But then it's like, it's like a pause here in chapter 25. And it's just a pause to think about his goodness in our lives. Look at this. He says, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. I am grateful for the truth of God's word. I am grateful that it doesn't change, that it's always the same, and it's we who need to have some discernment and uh, ha have a willing heart and an open mind to, to read and understand what God's word says and allow it to direct us and guide us. And uh, the and, and his faithfulness and truth will always abide. And we need to be students of the word and not just students of the word, but then also practicing the word of God, right? I mean, he goes on and he says this in, in uh, uh, verse eight, he says, he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away all, t wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Um, verse, chapter 25 was just a, a blessing of, of reading his promises that he gives to us. And, and then uh, it, it tells us this, in, starting off in chapter 26, and oh, how I want this for our nation too. It says, verse 2, Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. When, when you see the word keep in the in Old Testament, New Testament, both, it has the same idea to keep, to guard, to, to hang on to it and protect it. And we need to protect the truth. And, and a righteous nation will do that. How do they do that? Because churches will protect the truth. What is the truth? The truth is in God's word. We need to protect the word of God and and. Don't uh, do it injustice by misinterpreting things. And, and I don't know, even uh, uh, allowing misinterpretations to go unchecked or whatever. But if, if you will guard the truth, as it says, but keepeth the truth, thou will keep him in perfect peace. God will give you a perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Sometimes I get weary, I do, of, of the battles that um, all, all you want to do is, is try to protect what God's word says and do your best to interpret what God's word says. And um, people will get angry at you for that. People will mock you, people will get mad, uh, leave the church because of that. And, and look, I don't, I don't, there are things I don't know. There are, there are questions that I have that, that I struggle with. I, I, that, but there are certain things that I know, uh, and we're going to hold by that. And there's one thing that I'm certain of that the truth is all right here, all of it. And this is what we dictate our lives by. Not by our emotions, not by what, what we think. We base everything upon what does this say. This is our direction. This is our guide. This is the truth. Not your emotions, not what you think, not in your limited knowledge. This was written by God himself in all knowledge and all power and all wisdom. And we need to know what it says and then apply our lives to it and live according to it. That's it. Just live according to the word of God. And we, we just have, I, I don't know. There, look at this. This is a description of some of the spiritual leaders definitely of today. In Isaiah 28, 
verses seven through eight, seven and eight. But they, they also have erred through wine and, and, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They're swallowed up of wine. They're out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. I mean, that's, that's where we're at today. The, the churches are filthy and, and the, the spiritual leaders are, are drunk on, uh, whether it be alcohol or they're drunk on power and they're drunk on popularity and they're, they're, they're drunk on their own emotions and their, and, and, and their drive to be pleasing to everybody out there. And, and the sad thing is, is that there, there is no discernment in their lives. There is no care about the truth of God's word. And, and they, they actually mock the truth of God's word. And, and the sad thing is, is that people follow them in droves. And it goes on. And this is what they say about Isaiah. And they say this even to his face. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. I mean, he, he treats us all like children. And who is he to teach us anything whatsoever? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. With stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And they're, here they are saying these things. And then what does Isaiah say back to them? To whom he said, there is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Look, it's the word of God that is going to give you a refreshing. It's the word of God that, that will give you the perfect peace that he talked about in chapter 26. It's the it's the word of God that will keep us from going down the same path that Israel went down, that Judah went down. I mean, it's the word of God that, that we need to be preaching and teaching. And, and then what, is, what does Isaiah do? But the word of the Lord was upon them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, uh, here a little and there a little that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Look, there's a battle for the truth of God's word. And, and we better get into the word of God and understand what it says. And, and I, I am, I, I'll tell you what, I am, I am tired, tired of competing with all the jack wagons that are on the internet that are, that are on TV and on the radio and all of that trash. Look, if, if you want some rock star bebopping, smoke, smoke throwing preacher to be your preacher, then go let him be your preacher. But don't come crying to me whenever you find out he's a fake and he's a fraud. I, I mean, the, look, God works through his local church, local church local church. You need to be in a local church. You need to be there worshiping God in your local church. You need to be involved in your local church. You need to be sitting under a pastor that you can see and watch and know that he loves you, that he cares about you, that, that you are among a group of people that are sincere in their walk and in their faith. And, and, and these jack wagons that get out here and, and and do all this trash on TV or or on the internet or all they are not your pastor. There, there's no way they don't care. They don't know your name. They don't know anything about you. Know nothing about your struggles. They can't shepherd you. Uh, uh, and and God help us. I, I I probably shouldn't say these things, but God help us whenever we. I, I'm I anyway. We, we make a mockery of worship of God when we turn around and treat it like some stinking rock concert and he's some hero worship because of his fancy hairstyle and his under-armored shirts and his tight-wearing jeans and, and the smoke show and give me a break. Those men, most of those men, 
I, I guarantee you most of those men are fake because they're false prophets. They don't teach the truth. They're headed to hell and they're taking a bunch of people with them. And Jesus called them out and so should we. I, and and the, the idea that, that God winks at these things, Lord help us all, that that doesn't that that isn't it, you know, and and oh dear. Anyway, I shouldn't, but you know what we do? We guard the truth. How do you guard the truth? Well, even with a stammering tongue, they want to mock you or whatever they want to do. You just keep teaching them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and just lay it out. And, and leave it there. And if people don't want to follow that, well, you know what? Go on your merry little way. And we're going to continue to do what we're doing and do it to the best of our ability because that's what we see, that, that God uh, is, is the truth. And here's another warning. Look at this. <clears throat> Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. Under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And these guys that say all we should ever do is preach love and, and, and forget doctrine and forget the truth, it's a lie. It's a lie. I mean, Jesus chased those money changers out of the temple with a cat of nine tails. Jesus looked the, the Pharisees in the, in the eye and called them a bunch of hypocrites and whited walls and painted sepulchers. <laughs> then look at verses 16 and 17. How do you fix it? Well, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. You know who that is? That's Jesus. That's who he's talking about. It's Jesus. And, and they were to see the Messiah, that he was the one that protects them, guides them in the truth. All, all you have to, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of discernment to, to watch somebody for a little bit and see, are they about themselves or are they about Jesus? It's not even about you. You know, so, so many preachers fall into this prey of thinking that we have to be uh, some kind of psychologist and, and we're doing a counseling session on a Sunday or on a Wednesday. No, we're not. We are there to declare and proclaim the truth of God's word. It's not about us. It's about God. Everything that we do in our worship, it's about God. It's not about you. It's not about how to fix those things in, that, that you're struggling with today. It, it, and, and you sit there with your latte and, and your house slippers on and watch them jack on, on TV and, and think, wow, this is how I can fix myself. That isn't it. That's not worship. That's just, that's just self-worship. We worship God. And as we worship God, and we praise him, and we preach and proclaim his word, then we see that God takes that through the power of the Holy Spirit and fixes us. But it's all about God. That's the easiest way. Just You, you want to you wanna listen to these guys, then ask yourself as you watch them, are they about God or are they about themselves? Or are they about you? <laughs> oh, we like that. Ooh, it's about me. I like that. Isn't that nice? Well, it's not about you. True worship isn't about you. It's about seeing God for who he is and then realizing who we are and truly uh, trusting in his grace, his mercy, and his long suffering. So, oh, anyway, it's Tuesday. I'm done for a while, guys. I'll be off of here the rest of the week, all next week. Um, I just don't think I could, I don't think there'll be time uh, to get on. If I have a day, I will, but uh, don't look for me to be on here. So uh, God bless you guys. Let's get out there. Have a good day. Tell somebody about Jesus. Don't tell them about your problems. Tell them about Jesus 
the cure to all the problems. God bless you guys, and uh, let's uh, go out and have a great week.